so what I'm doing is I'm putting a push start button. You could buy these at O'Reilly's. They're like $4.99, about five bucks a piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install a, a push start button into my tractor that I'm gonna fix up and sell. And I want it to look nice. I don't want it to just be, you know, pushed in places where it doesn't need to be. I want it to look, you know, as kind of professional as it can get. I mean, uh, there's probably other ways that other people might like doing it. I don't know. This is my favorite way of doing it. So what I do is I get me one of these and I disconnect the the key start uh, for for the tractor and what you'll do is is you'll take off these tabs there's little tabs right here this is all dirty and you'll just snap you know snap them off all the way around it and get all the tabs off of it so what's gonna happen is it's gonna look kinda like this once you get all the tabs off of it you're gonna take it out and you're gonna gut the whole inside of it out so now we got all the parts shredded out of this little deal here. Throw those away. Get a drill bit. Now, I don't have the exact size of drill bit. You might, I don't. But you don't want it to be exactly the size. As you can see, it's not the exact size but it's close because what we're going to want to do is once we drill a hole through this we're going to want to put this in the middle and we're going to want to screw it in there as best as we can and get the the end of it to pop out as much as not as much but you know what I mean uh, about flush so that you can use this as the push start button so what I will do I recommend not doing it like this because you might cut your damn finger off or drill your finger I'm just going to do it slow. I'll put it in a vise because this thing will get caught up on you. Hollow it out a little bit. Kind of stupid. I shouldn't be doing it like that, but hey, I've done it a lot of times. And uh, so what we're going to do is basically screw this in. Now it's kind of hard to get it in there. So what I'll do with my drill is I will grind it out a little bit. Now I might need to drill it out a little bit more, but you get the idea of what's going on here. Is now we'll be able to put the push start button right in the middle of the old key switch. And then when you pop this thing in there all nicely, you'll just have a nice little push start button in there installed. So I'll drill that out a little bit more and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So now I got the deal all screwed in there. Pretty good. Now the push start button will work per properly the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you want to be careful when you're drilling that out because you know it doesn't have much plastic around in there to uh, hold on to. If you, if you make it too big and you bore out the hole too big, then this push start button won't fit in there correctly. So this kind of makes it to where you don't have to get one of them push start buttons where you just screw to the you know the outside of the plastic and it looks kind of ghetto. Uh, I'm going for a nice clean look. Yeah. All right, here we are at the tractor. Put this little seat down. And now we here we have the push start button. Goes right in there like that, and clips right in, right into the existing key. Now, when you want to start it up, boom! Push that bad boy down, and you're ready to fire. Of course, you got to hook up your uh, your uh, ignition switch and all that stuff like that. I already have my wires hooked up almost ready to go it'll hook right up to it and then boom we'll fire it up I'm also gonna have to rewire the PTO clutch for the blades which that's pretty easy to do too it has a bunch of wires hooked up to it I just pull everything out strip it out and it only literally like takes two plugs to make the switch work Now I'll show you what it looks like when it's all hooked up. Alright, so I got my jumper cables hooked up to my battery terminals from the back, right off of my other tractor, using that for now. 
and uh, set these down. Careful with that. So here we got the push start button wired in. Boom. That works out good. And then here we have the clutch. You hear that clicking in. That's for the blades. That'll hook on the shaft of the motor underneath there. Got it all just mocked up right now to make sure everything's working correctly the way it should. So let's set this over here. So what you will need is probably, of course, some uh, wire nuts. You'll need some terminal set right here for you know to make your own little terminals and stuff like that. Definitely get those. I got those at Harbor Freight. So here's the push starter button. All it is is a 20 amp push start button that I got from O'Reilly's. I took those little pieces off. You don't need those when you're uh, putting that push start button in there. And then I also have uh, an on and off switch right here, uh, which I have installed right here to shut the motor down. Um, so here, I'll basically take you through the wiring and show you. It looks like a mess, but really, honestly, it is very, very simple. So what I do first, as you can see, there's a safety switch down there. It ain't got nothing connected to it. Everything on this safety switch bull crap that's on here is bypassed. We do not have to worry about ever having a safety switch problem, which it's also a little dangerous. You got to be a little careful. You don't want your kid getting on here or something and firing this damn thing up and going, and taking off, you know what I mean? So uh, there is a bunch of wires right there. I just gut everything out. That's what I like to do. I like to start from scratch. But what I like to do is not have to take a bunch of these wires and get brand new ones. You want to try to cut the wires or disconnect them from every spot you can and get m the most amount of wires is what I do. And I like to kind of keep them color coded too. You know, you got your red for your hots, you got your uh, black for your ground. Of course, I got a blue one on there. That's actually a hot, but uh, it works. Um, so that's what you want to do. You want to uh, strip out all the wires to everything as much as you can. Um, cut them if you have to. If it's easier, just make sure you get enough long strips because you're going to be running shit all the way up here, you know, everything. So, so basically what I'll show you here is we got a hot, a hot end, which is a constant 12 volts. And then you have another wire, which is also when you push this, it switches over to 12 volts and it brings it over to the solenoid. Sorry if my camera's a little shitty. It's the best we got. So what we got here is we got a cable going from the other side of the solenoid to the starter over here. And then we have 12 volt power running all the way to the back to the tractor. So everything I'm drawing power from, uh, like the, the PTO switch right here, uh, we got a hot going to the PTO switch. We have a hot going to the push start button. That's about it right there. You know, on the on the hot wires that you need. So I will show you. We got one hot wire right on here. This blue wire. It goes all the way up. And as you can see, the PTO switch. The blue one's the hot. The only the ones you need to use to make the switch work to create it as a regular switch is one hot going in, and then when it converts over, it turns it on and draws power through the red one which the red one comes all the way down to the clutch. So basically that's how the clutch works. But the black wire needs to be constant ground. So as you can see, I just have it mocked up right here. I'm gonna ground this out somewhere. I just kinda grounded it right here for now. So that way I can make that work. And then, so the push start button, you got a hot wire coming from it, coming from the, the constant 12 volts on the solenoid, runs up to the switch, and then the other one runs back down to the solenoid, start button goes to the solenoid, and then when you push the push start button, the power from the battery terminal makes a connection and fires the mine fart solenoid and then you have to ground on the other post to ground which the blue wire comes over here to the ground that's just mocked up 
Uh, so that's how you would put in the solenoid. Sometimes these solenoids only have one post. That means that this solenoid itself needs to be grounded to the frame like it is here. So if you only got one post, then it's the same setup except no ground. It'll be grounded to the frame itself when you bolt it down. See how it's all loose? And then right here coming off the engine, you have two plugs or two wires that are coming out from underneath on the uh, stator, which is underneath the flywheel. That actually generates about seven volts or six and a half. And the red wire is the wire that gives off the, the volts. So this red wire, I got a little wire nut right on here. The red wire runs all the way back up to 12 volts. So that way it could trickle, you know, kind of uh, keep the battery charged while you're running the mower. So that's uh, pretty much looks like it. I think I've went through most of it. Um, if there's any uh, any questions or comments, man, leave them down below if I if I miss something. I'll show you this again. Here's another uh, a PTO switch for the blades, and you could see that the the back two only need to be used. So it's these two right here. Make a switch. So one will have 12 volts, and then when you pull the dill up it'll click on and it'll put 12 volts to this part and then go right down to the uh, the clutch which also needs to be grounded I'm sure I've said that already but I just want to make sure I go through everything that way uh, people know what's going on and then what I have here is there is actually another black wire that comes out from underneath behind the starter which it runs to the two ignition coils which fire the mower so I have a wire nut on the end of the wire, and then I got the black wire running all the way up to my little uh, kill switch shutoff that I showed you. And then I have the other end of it running directly over here, and it goes right to the ground, right there. So you gotta have the, a lot of stuff grounded. So when you shut it off, You'll just turn it on, and then when you want to shut the mower down, it grounds out the coils and shuts the mower down. No power, what's going on? <laughs> Figure that out. I think the battery came disconnected back there. So that's uh, pretty much it on the wiring. And then you want to tuck everything all good. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all nice and tucked up. And I'll show you this tractor when it's all nice and done, fixed up, looking good. Right now it's got some straight pipes on it. I'm gonna try to get this bad boy fired up right now. I just cleaned the carburetor out on it, put a new gas line. We got a brand new one running over here. Two, it's gonna run to the tank. See what it sounds like. Also, one more thing I wanted to show you guys just in case you come across this problem and you go and wire your whole entire tractor and then you're like, okay, I got gas, I got spark, and my shit still ain't firing up. This little deal right here is called a anti-backfiring anti system. And when 12 volts hits it, this little deal goes boop, and it lets the main jet suck up gas. So while the tractor's running, this thing will be down. As soon as you shut off the key, boom, it goes up and it plugs up the main jet. This is a, a pain in the ass. I've, I've actually had these things fail several times. And what you would do is right at the base of the bolt part right here is you would take some nice big cutters that you got and just snap that piece off clean and it'll be gone this wire is actually not even working there's nothing hooked up to it I've actually disconnected it because I'm rewiring it and I don't want to hook up you know that all it actually does is is when you shut the mower down it, it helps stop the pop sound you know that sometimes they'll make which they don't do it all the time so all I did was unscrew this piece out of there and snap that piece off and put it back in and uh, now there's no no power going to this you don't have to worry uh, because this will plug up the main jet in there and you will not get any fire so I recommend you taking that off if you have one if it's just a bolt underneath then you ain't got nothing to worry about but most of them have this little bill all right here we go got the cables hooked up carburetors clean got some gas lines got the fuel tank hooked up so where that's going to sit, put everything all back together, move that tank out of the way so you can see the wires all nice and tucked in there, all nice and wire tied. 
uh, of the zip ties zip tied up and everything. Got that solenoid mounted. Got the clutch thing. I still got to hook that up for the blades. When I hook that all up, I'm going to do that last. So uh, just remember your uh, black cord that comes off, it always has to touch the ground. Set that aside. So I'm going to fire it up, see how she sounds. All right, let's fire this bad boy up. That's it. That's all she wrote. Now I just gotta put it all back together and clean her up. Not bad. Well, if you guys find this video uh, helpful to you in any way, man, drop a like, man. I appreciate that. And uh, drop a comment too, man. Let me know if there was anything uh, you might need to know. Uh, I do this for a living, so I could always make another video on anything. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe too, man.